So in previous theories, we have looked at what is happening to the Pale City, and we assume that the Thin Man or the Signal Tower are the root cause of the nightmares in this world. But one thing we have not explored yet is the theory that this entire world is Mono's nightmare. Spoiler warning, there's going to be spoilers for the entire franchise in this video, so if you don't want to be spoiled on Little Nightmares 2, or the previous games, or the comics, click off this video now. So we've already established that Mono either replaces the Thin Man or becomes the Thin Man in a time loop, paradox, or if you've watched my timeline theory video, a broken timeline. But there are some people that think the entire world of Little Nightmares 2 is just that, a nightmare. Could this theory be valid? Absolutely. In fact, there is quite a lot of evidence to suggest that it is. So the thing that got me thinking about this in the first place was, you guessed it, a picture. The more eagle-eyed among you might have noticed a few pictures in Little Nightmares 2 that seem out of place, well, more out of place than usual. Throughout the game we see a picture of a boy sat alone, and while the locations change, you can see in this one he's sat on a bookshelf, and in this one he appears to be sat next to a hospital bed, the boy himself seems to be pretty stationary. Now at first glance this appears to be a clever foreshadowing of Mono's fate. We know that at the end of the game, Mono is resigned to growing up, sat alone in a chair with nothing but the creepy eyes to keep him company. But what if these pictures are more than just foreshadowing? What if these pictures explain the entire reason this world is so messed up? To explain this theory, I'm going to have to make some big assumptions, but I think I might be able to finally explain Mono's backstory from a viewpoint that no one else has yet explored. So for this theory, we have to assume that at some point, the world, including Mono, were normal. I still think that there is a malevolent force at play here related to the eye, but we will get to that in another video. So many of the twisted things that we see in the game could be attributed to how children see the world. A lot of the things in these games, the teacher, the doctor, the chefs, the pale city, they all seem to be based in normality. The chefs smoke, the doctor washes his hands, the pale city is full of normal things like undelivered letters. Why do these monstrous things seem to have human elements? It's entirely possible that these things are just left over, almost echoes from before these things got corrupted by the signal tower, but it's also possible that these monsters are how normal things could be viewed through the eyes of a child. This would also explain why the world seems so large in comparison to Mono and Six. That's because the world seems big from their viewpoint, so it seems large to ours too. This is basically the metaphorical theory of Little Nightmares, and it's one that I really enjoy. The world is essentially one big children's nightmare, but my theory goes just a little bit further than that. This isn't just any nightmare, this is Mono's nightmare based on his real life events. So going back to this picture, we see a child. I'm assuming that this is Mono. It looks very similar to him. He's sat looking very lonely and down. Look at his posture. And he appears to be sat next to what looks like a hospital bed. Perhaps this is just a nod to the next area of the game. After all, the hospital comes after the school. But what if it means much more than that? So this is where I theorize. Mono had an ordinary life before Little Nightmares 2. This picture is a reference to that. His normal life before this nightmare life. So if we look at this picture and actually try to understand it, I think we can assume that at some point in his life, Mono spent time in a hospital. But not for himself, since he sat next to the bed, not in it. This is where I started to connect the dots. Why would Mono have to spend time in a hospital? Well, it must be a family member, and perhaps it's one of his parents. So Mono spent time with a family member in a real hospital. This could absolutely explain everything that we see in the nightmare hospital. Things like prosthetics might not seem scary to you or me, but in the mind of a child, this doctor might seem much more sinister. Children often don't have a full understanding of the world, and often they use their imagination to fill in the blanks. It's possible that Mono saw the patient's missing limbs, he might have even seen glimpses into other rooms, and this scared him, so much so that he now has a fear of the hospital. Perhaps he even spent nights there, which would explain why we see some scary things that only seem to come out in the darkness. Why would Mono have to spend nights at the hospital in the first place? Well, quite simply, he only had one parent, and that parent got seriously sick. Okay, hear me out on this one. Another area we see in the game is the school, but this isn't just an ordinary school, it's actually a boarding school. We know this because we see a bunch of beds in one of the first rooms surrounded by children's toys. So these are beds for the children, definitely not for the staff. So it's definitely a boarding school. Well, why would it be a boarding school? Perhaps because this is the school that Mono went to because his only parent was too sick to take care of him, or worse. While here, his teacher, who was incredibly strict, seemed to have eyes in the back of her head. She seemed to spot any misbehavior. This could be a metaphorical representation of how adult teachers are often far more observant and crafty than young students. It makes sense. The teacher never blinking could mean she never misses a thing. And to a child, that could be seen as almost supernatural or almost a little bit scary. So we are assuming that Mono's only parent was incredibly sick or injured, and I'm going to assume it was his father, but it could just as easily be his mother, but I'm just gonna presume that it was his father. Well, how did he get sick? Simple. 
on a hunting trip. The hunter's cabin seems so out of place in this game. The entire rest of the game takes place in the Pale City, but this seems to be a significant location too. The things here that seem scary could also be entirely normal. Bear traps commonly used, probably terrifying to a child, especially if they saw how they work. Taxidermy too, while some adults don't like it, few people are scared of it, but to a child, this stuff could be nightmare fuel. So we have established that this world is tied to Mono's memories, but why has he been here before? This is where I take some big liberties with the story, but if we assume that Mono and Mono's dad lived in the Pale City, after all the hospital and school are both there, it's not a big stretch to assume that they lived there too. There wasn't really much to do there, this is why the TV sold so well. The people had very little to do after work aside from sit in their homes and watch TV, and this is where the viewers metaphor comes in. The viewers act like zombies, their only care in the world is the television. We can see around the game and the comics the hints that people began to become so obsessed with the TV that they would sit and eat their dinner in front of it, and we can see that because so many of their dishes began to pile up in stacks. But there is also another link here. If we look at the Pale City, there are a number of clear hints that this is based on a Japanese city. We see the symbols on the advertisements and labels that look vaguely like Japanese characters. Uh, sorry, I'm not an expert on Japanese, I don't know the difference between their different scripts, but it does look very similar. Further to that, we also see that the city is incredibly well developed, but the architecture definitely has a Japanese feel to it, and we know that the lady from the first game was based on a geisha, which is another Japanese tradition. One of the biggest concerns for Japan right now in the real world is loneliness. We can see an alarming number of people feeling incredibly lonely in Japan, partly due to their incredibly work-focused lifestyles. For example, one of the reasons why handheld consoles are so popular in Japan is that many don't have time to play video games, and so they use their commute time every day to play. We also see that less people in Japan are getting married, and Okamoto Junko, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, called Japan's middle-aged men the loneliest people in the world. In fact, as I am recording this video today, Japan actually just appointed a minister for loneliness. A lot of this is tied to the Japanese work culture, which we can definitely see represented in the thin man's attire. He's wearing a business suit and tie, and if you look at the majority of the clothes left behind in the city, most of them are also formal clothing. We're going to come back to this feeling of loneliness later, as it's a key part of Mono's story, but you can see that the Pale City definitely has a metaphorical representation of modern Japan, and just how lonely some of the cities in Japan can be. So to escape this… monotony, Mono's parent decided to take a vacation. A hunting trip seems like a reasonable choice, especially for this time period. This would absolutely explain why we go to the hunter's cabin in the game. So Mono's parent took Mono to the woods on this trip, and while there, a horrific accident happened. Mono's dad was gravely injured, which is also not an impossibility. Hunting is dangerous, bear traps, danger, shotguns, deadly, wild animals, yup. Many things like this can cause a serious injury. We could speculate even further that the hunter of this cabin and his family tried to help. We can see the obvious link between taxidermy and people here, but what if this was Mono's memory of the family attempting to fix the wound? Maybe even sewing it shut? Even more nightmare fuel for Mono. So here's the timeline that I have in my head so far. Mono and his father lived a very boring life in the Pale City. Mono's father worked so much that Mono had to attend a boarding school. They took a hunting trip to get away for a while, but while there, Mono's father suffered a tragic accident which left him in a critical state in the hospital. This is where Mono's biggest fear comes into play. He fears losing his father, because that would leave him alone. Remember Mono's name? Mono in Latin or Greek means singular, or alone. So Mono's biggest fear is being alone, with nothing but his TV to keep him company, something that he's seen quite regularly with his time in the Pale City, and he's probably even seen this in his own father. This becomes even more tragic when you think about how the game ends. Six lets Mono go, leaving him with nobody but the TV to keep him company. He slowly grows older, becoming more and more lifeless, more and more lonely, until he is just another victim of the Pale City. We even see the colour drain out of him too, leaving nothing but a shell of a human. We could even go one step further with this entire theory. Maybe this is why the Thin Man kidnaps people in the first place. He's so scared of being alone, that his monstrous form steals other children to keep him company in the realm he's trapped in. Maybe that's why the TVs also suck people in, he just doesn't want to be alone. We could even theorise that his fear of being alone is why Mono travels here and rescues Six in the first place. Maybe Six let Mono go because she knew that Mono would keep her trapped forever, forever fearing being alone and so never allowing her to leave. 
This still fits with the time loop or broken time theory too. Six leaving Mono was the final straw for him. Everyone else had already left him feeding his fear and this was the final thing that pushed him into becoming the Thin Man, which is what caused the entire broken time paradox in the first place. So Mono's fear of growing up alone with nothing but a TV to keep him company finally came true. His worst nightmares realised the Pale City is nothing but an exaggerated or child's perspective of a soulless city based on real life Japanese culture which would make this entire game a poignant warning for humanity. There are more links to the Pale City being a metaphor for Japanese loneliness but I didn't want to delve too deeply again into the real life troubles and make this video even more depressing than it needed to be but I do want to say that I adore the Japanese culture and I don't want anyone to perceive them in a negative light. After all, many of the troubles in Japan are also happening in modern UK and America too. The entire franchise serves as a commentary on modern culture in general and the concept is a very fascinating one to me. People becoming slowly more and more lonely as they spend more time alone indoors watching TV. This could even extend to us, people who are obsessed with YouTube, who can't stop watching YouTube content. We are all becoming slightly more lonely and we're all becoming connected through television screens and not between real humans anymore. It's a whole big theory and I love it. And the more and more that I think about it, the more connections I can see with this theory and throughout the entire game of Little Nightmares 2. If you have enjoyed this theory video, I have a bunch more on the channel and more horror content too. Give these videos a click over here if you want to. Either way, I hope you have enjoyed and I will see you next time.